A lot of this has become COTS technology. This is, the, this is a Polycom unit that's sitting on my TV set in my house um, so that I can talk to people in Europe at ridiculous times of the day. I can also uh, log in from work and check whether the dog's still asleep in the chair it's, uh, <laughs> and other things. Um, and then at the extreme end of this, this is uh, another form of video conferencing technology called Access Grid. Um, nowhere near as COTS, nowhere near as easy to use. Um, you tend to need a technology person around to, to keep it running whilst you're doing that. But this is a meeting we held last week um, at about 5 p.m. to some collaborators in, in Austria where we've got some, um, some nice little projects going. On the screen there, what you see is um, our multiple windows projected across three projectors worth. So it's a full wall of video. Um, on the left-hand side, there are various views. So this is um, Dieter Kranzmüller, one of our collaborators, in one window, another room, a view of their room. In fact, you can see the view that they're seeing of us because those pictures on the screen are our video being projected. Uh, various members there, our video from our end, plus dumps of computer screens. So the, the collaborative project is around um, software tools. And um, so this is actually a screen dump that we were doing a demonstration of a piece of software. And they had the same quality uh, image at the other end. Someone wants to collaborate with you. <laughs> <laughs> Stand on that or something else. It's gone, don't worry. Um, this is a, a, uh, a new technology with multiple video screens. These are um, LCD screens bolted as close as you can put them together. They're called tile display walls. Uh, this, this was between two Pragma meetings, I think between Thailand and... Um, <laughs> The director of IT can deal with that, I'm sure. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. No, you didn't. Yeah. Uh, that was good. Sorry. I always turn these things off before. Um, this is another tile display wall where you're immersing yourself in doing uh, visualisation. I don't really have time to talk about um, all of those, but there's another couple of tools I was going to mention where people have built specific tools for specific problem domains. Now the question I always get asked, always get asked is, so you don't have to travel anymore. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I did a little bit of research, actually went back <laughs> to my calendar, <laughs> and if you look at the scale there, that's uh, there's something like 40, they're flights, that's not trips, that's their flights, so some of them are once I'm already away. Uh, this hasn't got rid of travel, and in fact, the time I started using video conferencing the most was sort of in this period here. Right. And it's been pretty stable since. So the obvious question is, what's happened? And I can't, I can't give you an absolute theory, but here's my, here's my, uh, my ill-informed theory. There are people that I would never have considered working with before. So we regularly collaborate with University of Zurich, University of Linz in Austria, um, <laughs> Oxford, UCSD. Sometimes I come home and I uh, say, I've been to three countries today. But you've still got to see them occasionally. So what happens is you collaborate now with more people, and so you still need to see them for face-to-face -face meetings sometimes. Some of those are overloaded with conferences, so um, so travel hasn't gone away. I, haven't very I just want to show you uh, show you a video. It will take a few minutes, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But it really I just sums up for us. I haven't been a very person. I wanted to go abroad or do any studies whatsoever. I had never even left North America before this program at all. And so it's really actually a very new experience for me to leave the country and be doing research in a very new environment. And it was really special in that way about um, having that, a very like new cultural experience at the same time as being able to get more research. And I apologize for the bad acting. It's a bad I had very little experience in research. And this experience has um, opened my eyes to the international scale. These students are talking about PRIME, the Pacific Rim Undergraduate Experiences Program, a unique program that provides undergraduates from UC San Diego with summer collaborative research opportunities at research institutions in Japan, Taiwan, China, and Australia. Students are placed at universities affiliated with the Pacific Rim Applications and Grid Middleware Assembly, or PRAGMA. The activities in, in PRAGMA are, are um, you know, projects that are self-funded. And what the prime students do is they come in and work in various things and sort of act as glue. So in our case, we have uh, students who act as glue between exciting 
projects, science-based projects here at UCSD, and, um, and projects in Australia where we're building tools. So it's a pretty natural marriage. Biomedical engineering major Angelina Altshuler spent last summer at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, doing research on heart modeling. The program benefits not only the student, but UCSD and the host institution as well. The research itself is... Yeah, I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're interested in learning something very specific. Uh, and both the, the host mentor and the UCSD mentor on what the, the product of what the student uh, produces. Primary funding for Prime comes from the National Science Foundation with additional support from the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology. So I think the NSF should be congratulated for taking you know, what might be considered a pretty bold and expensive view about how to train the next generation of scientists. So these kids come out and, you know, they haven't just gone through a university degree in one country, they've gone somewhere else culturally, you know, other, other cultures and, and worked in other projects. So we'll do anything we can to make it continue. From the second year, we had a lot more cultural experience, training, preparedness, awareness, uh, building for the students that go. And each year we've layered another level of, uh, if you will, um, hopefully richness into the program to enhance both the research component of this experience as well as the cultural awareness. <coughs> I think by going to Japan is, it reaffirmed that you know, I love doing this. I love going to, I love working internationally. This experience has just shown that there's so many possibilities out there and so much more to learn. And I just definitely want to see so many places now. It yeah, will probably retire and sit back and see one of these kids was going to do something great. Because they're, they're really smart and they're getting an experience that they wouldn't otherwise get. So I think, uh, I think it's a fantastic program. It's not like studying abroad because you're actually doing real world research and you're uh, contributing something to the scientific community instead of just learning about it, and even though you are learning at the same time. Um, and then it's, it's not exactly like an internship because you, know, you get to go to another country. So I guess it's like the best of both worlds. Celia Croy and other Prime alums were on hand recently, sharing their experiences at a UC. I might just chop that. Um, so let me just have three closing <laughs> comments then, all three wants. Um, you can't, uh, Seymour Cray, who invented super, built supercomputers, used to say something like, you can't fake real bandwidth. <laughs> so you need bandwidth. None of this goes through the air through through uh, through salty string. Um, no charges uh, is not strictly uh, necessary, but we need predictable charging. And we've had some interesting experience with the the uh, savanna burns that we did across the, the runs that we did across the globe, where we didn't understand how the charging would quite work, even though we tried to find out. Um, but then I think innovative multi-institutional programs like this like this Prime program, um, I just love to see that overlaid on top of. Monash abroad in, in a much richer sense. Um, so, yeah, no, that's very good. Thank you very much.